The Warriors' second unit would be considered a good NBA starting five, as Poole, DiVincenzo, Moody, Kaminga, and Wiseman make the reigning champions increasingly deep. A separate video is being put together on the greatest point guard of all time, Stephen Curry, and potentially this team's leading scorer in 22-23, Jordan Poole. Expected to be another all-star starting S campaign for Vaughn, Ontario native Andrew Wiggins. We'll break down Wiggins in another video as well. But today we're going to look at the Dubs' insanely talented supporting cast, highlighted by the fact that Jamichael Green is the team's 11th man. On a separate note, Steve Kerr's choice not to suspend Draymond will turn out to be a season-saving decision. After breaking down why Kerr made the right call, this video displays why the depth of the 2023 Warriors will be a big factor in the team's quest to repeat. Right before that, subscribe if you haven't already to help the channel reach 100k, leave a like on this video to help it spread to more people, and support the development of this platform even further by following the channel on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Thanks for any bit of support. If Jordan Poole didn't want Draymond back, the Warriors organization would have listened to him and suspended him. Poole forgiving Green goes to show you Jordan's wise beyond his years and 100% committed to winning. The fact that Jordan's on board with this decision to bring Green back is what many fan bases across the association are failing to fully take into account. The importance of Draymond to the dynasty is undeniable, and he needed to get back. Of course, as President Bob Myers just said on air, Stephen Curry's the greatest face of the franchise of all time. Steph's tied with Michael Jordan for the most finals appearances in 13 career seasons. But like MJ needed Pippen and Rodman, Curry needs Clay and Draymond. Without Draymond Green historically, the Warriors are just 57 and 51, and last season they were just 19 and 17 when Green missed extended time dealing with a back injury. Draymond, Igudala, Steph, and Clay are the only group of four teammates to win four plus chips together other than Kareem, Magic, Michael Cooper, and Kurt Rambis for the Lakers in the 1980s. All the pieces needed to be in place before the Warriors kicked off their quest to repeat as NBA champions, as there's a ton of new weapons in the Warriors system that Green has to get used to. One of Steve Kerr's biggest statements from yesterday's press conference was saying, he broke our trust, but I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because I think he's earned that, and I think our team feels the same way. End quote. Let's not forget, Green did a near 40-minute press conference where he faced and responded well to every question asked of him, displaying solace and remorse. While that doesn't excuse what Draymond did whatsoever, it's likely why Jordan Poole decided to forgive him. Most crucially, Draymond's passing chops, screen setting, rebounding, defensive rotations, and vocal leadership, again, needed to get back quickly in order to find rhythm with the Warriors' cast of young talent. Speaking of the assortment of tough weapons off the Dubs bench, let's talk about why it's far from the last dance, whether Green decides to join LeBron and the Lakers in 2023's free agency or not. Let me be very clear, the defensive prowess of Draymond can never be replaced individually, but the Warriors have an array of talent up front that makes them well suited for the future. The growth of 2020's number two overall pick, James Wiseman, is extremely evident early on in this year's preseason, and he'll only continue that development as the years progress. James isn't close to being as versatile as Green when guarding in pick and rolls, and his screen setting also needs to significantly improve. However, Wiseman's toughness in terms of his exceptional hands to catch passes in traffic, then post up or finish off plays down low, and how the man can mix it up offensively by spacing the floor with a mid-range shot would make him a crunch time center on about any team in the NBA. It's amazing that people were saying LaMelo should have been chosen over James because while Melo's a great player, Wiseman fits this Warriors system so damn perfectly. So far in 2022's preseason, Wiseman's evidently been in the best shape of his playing career, which has shown up on the stat sheet. In just under 20 minutes in each of Golden State's four preseason games so far, the 21-year-old 7-foot, 258-pound locomotive is overpowering any bench five-man placed in front of him. Despite the limited minutes, Wiseman's averaging 14.8 points and 6.3 rebounds on 66.8% true shooting. 
Green is year in, year out the Warriors' top assist per game guy. Last year, in a limited 46 outings due to injury, Green averaged 7 assists per game, and while one Warrior player can't make up for that individually, if Green decides to move on in 2023, the playmaking from the Warriors' young players and 2022 free agent pickups set up Golden State very well for the future. Because so far in this year's preseason, typical bench pieces in Jamichael Green, Dante DiVincenzo, Jordan Poole, Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga have combined to average over 11 assists per game. Maybe the Warriors expected Jonathan Kaminga to show flashes of being a future star when they selected him 7th overall last year, but it's actually the man who they took 7 picks later with the final pick in the lottery, Moses Moody, who's shocked the world by resembling a key rotation piece and potential perennial all-star once fully developed. Moody's look tremendous in this year's preseason as well, as coast-to-coast -coast takes in transition like the one on your screen is just one of many instances where Moses seems to be much more than the 3 and D role player that many expected Golden State was getting when they drafted him last year. Against Portland, Moody scored 20 points which included 3 triples on 68% true shooting. From the highlights of his most recent preseason outburst, you see exactly why he won the Summer League Scoring Championship. Now it's on Moody to keep the production rolling for when the real season kicks off next week. I've said it multiple times in prior videos before, and I'll preach it again. This kid reminds me of Paul Pierce, and with more experience, is capable of getting to the Hall of Famer's level. From manufacturing shots in either pick and rolls or isolations, to displaying high IQ awareness of the Warriors' advanced playbook, as well as solid passing, Moody's an extremely smart offensive player. Best part about Moody is the man's attention to detail and physicality on the defensive end. This clip in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals shows you the kid's savvy off-ball defense and passing lane awareness as he forces Bertans to kick it out, doesn't chase the ball, smartly staying attached to Brunson, before instinctively springing up to snag Finney Smith's attempted pass over him. Moody's on-ball defense is even better, as here, after slightly falling for Xavier Tillman's jab step, he just bounces back laterally off his right lead foot before winding up and getting all ball. Moses is just one of many two-way young gems for this powerhouse warrior organization. Aside from Jordan Poole, who we're going to break down in my next Warriors video, who's your favorite Warriors young gem? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out in the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winners from my last three uploads since we skipped Community Speaks for some time are Hamish S, who says the Pelicans will finish third in the Western Conference, Lord Drip, who correctly predicts a fine for Draymond, not a suspension, and Boston Haltane, who says Victor Wembenyama's one of a kind and you can't compare him to anyone. Pause to read their full answers on my questions. Thanks for watching.